grade 8 learners, welcome sa isa na namang episode na punong-puno ng kaalaman. Mundo ng numbers, atin niyang pag-uusapan. Kaya ano pang hinihintay nyo? Halinas matuto! Are you ready for a fun-filled discussion? By the way, I am your math teacher for today. I am Andre Marie A. Tarun. Stay tuned in for another exciting grade 8 mathematics lesson. Only here at Halinath Matuto sa Desmarinas North National High School. In week 2 of quarter 1, we will talk about rational algebraic expression. To be specific, you will be able to illustrate rational algebraic expression and simplify rational algebraic expression. Bago tayo magsimula, siguro doing hawak ninyo ang inyong ballpen, scratch papers, para masundan ninyo ang ating talakayan. Are you ready? Let's start! Last week, we were able to factor completely different types of polynomials. Polynomials with common monomial factor, difference of two squares, sum and difference of two cubes, perfect square trinomials, and general trinomials. Now, let us go to our topic, Rational Algebraic Expression. If you can remember that a rational number is a ratio of two real numbers. For example, 3 over 7. While an algebraic expression is composed of a term or group of terms. Example, 2x plus 4. A term is composed of coefficients and or variables with multiplication or division as a mathematical operation. So, what is a rational algebraic expression? It is an expression that can be written as a fraction of the form P over Q, where P and Q can be polynomials, and Q must not be equal to zero. In other words, a rational algebraic expression is an expression whose numerator and denominator are polynomials. Remember that the polynomials do not use negative or fractional exponent. Like for example, x raised to negative 3. This is not a polynomial since the exponent is negative. Another example, x raised to 2 thirds. This is not a polynomial because the exponent is a fraction. Another, polynomials do not have variable in the radical sign. See, this is not a polynomial because we have square root, we have a radical sign, square root of 3x. In this exercise, let us determine which of the following is a rational algebraic expression or not. Is 3x minus 1 a rational algebraic expression? It's not because there is no denominator that is a polynomial. What about a squared minus a plus 2? This is not because there is no denominator that is a polynomial. And is 2 over c raised to negative 2 a polynomial? No, because the variable has a negative exponent. Okay, let's try this one. Is this a rational algebraic expression or not? 
7x divided by 9xy. Yes, you are correct. This is a rational algebraic expression. In this exercise, let us illustrate a rational expression whose numerator is m and the denominator is n. First, let us write m in the numerator and n in the denominator, where n is not equal to 0. Now, given the expression x plus 15 and 3x, Illustrate two rational expressions whose value of x is not equal to 0. First illustration is x plus 15 over 3x, where x is not equal to 0 because when x is equal to 0, you will get 3 times 0 is equal to 0. Another is 3x over x plus 15. Well, x is equal to negative 15, because when x is equal to negative 15, you will have negative 15 plus 15 is equal to 0. Now, let us simplify rational algebraic expressions. Simplifying rational algebraic expression is the same as simplifying rational numbers. Both uses the concept of factoring, factoring out, and canceling the GCF. Look at this pizza which is divided into 8 slices. What if you are so hungry and you ate 4 slices? How many are left? What fraction is given by this illustration? There are 4 slices left out of 8. What do you remember about writing fractions? Fractions can be written in lowest term or simplest form. It can be expressed in the lowest terms by dividing common factors in the numerator and the denominator. Can you factor 4 over 8? Okay, so the factor of 4 is 2 times 2, while 8 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2. Now, we can see that there are two common factors, which is 2. We divide the common factors, 2, divided by 2, we're left with 1, and 2 divided by 2, again, we are left with 1. So, the simplest form of 4 over 8 is half. Now, Let us get the simplest form of 8c divided by 8. The factors of a and e is a. The factor of ac is a times c, and the factor of ae is a times e. Since we have a as common both to the numerator and the denominator, we we'll have to divide it and cancel it out. And we are left with what? So the simplest form of AC divided by AE is equal to C over E. Aside from the knowledge of factoring, simplifying rational algebraic expression also applies the loss of exponent. I will just run through the loss of exponent. Just wait for another video 
exclusively for the review of loss of exponent. So for a quick review of, multi of the loss of exponent for multiplication, we simply add exponent when multiplying with the same base or variable and getting the product of a raised to x times a raised to y again we just add the exponent so a is equal to x plus y in getting the quotient with the same variable we simply subtract the exponent so a raised to x divided by a raised to y will give us a raised to x minus y next a raised to x quantity raised to y what are you going to do you just simply multiply the exponent so a is equal to x times y now for zero exponent this is very simple any number or any variable raised to zero is equal to one and for the negative exponent like a raised to negative x just have to bring the base with the negative exponent in the denominator so a raised to negative x is equal to 1 over a raised to x okay let's try to simplify x raised to 5 divided by x raised to 3 so x raised to 5 is also equal to x times x times x times x times x and x raised to 3 is equal to x times x times x what are we going to do? We'll cancel out the factors that is common to the numerator and the denominator. So we'll cancel x, divided by x, cancel x, divided by x, another x. So we are left with x raised to 2 because we only have 2x left in the numerator or simply a plus or you can simply apply the law of exponent x raised to 5 divided by x raised to 3 again in getting the quotient you will simply subtract the exponents so x raised to 5 minus 3 5 minus 3 is x raised to 2. Simple as that. Let's move to another example. x plus 5 quantity squared divided by x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, so x plus 5 quantity squared will give us x plus 5 quantity multiplied to x plus 5. Now, for the factor of x squared plus 7x plus 10, it will give us x plus 5 multiplied to x plus 2. Now, since we both have x plus 5 in the numerator and the denominator, we have to divide it, it will give us 1, and we are left with x plus 5 divided by x plus 2. So, x plus 5 quantity squared divided by x squared plus 7x plus 10 will give us x plus 5 divided by x plus 2. Okay, let's try to simplify 2a plus 4 all over 3a minus 6. The numerator 2a plus 4 has the greatest common factor, which is 2. It can be written as 2 times the quantity of a plus 2. 
what is the greatest common monomial factor of the denominator? It is 3. So, the denominator can be written as 3 times the quantity of a minus 2. What did you observe? Do they have common factors? No, they don't have. It means that the numerator and the denominator are relatively prime. And if this happens, the given rational expression is in its simplest form. So that's it. Did you learn something? Let us now summarize everything we discussed in today's lesson. We were able to illustrate a rational algebraic expression where it is simply an expression that can be written as a fraction of the form p over q where p and q can be polynomials and q is not equal to zero. Rational algebraic expression is simply an expression whose numerator and denominator are polynomials. We also simplify rational algebraic expression. For us to simplify rational algebraic expression, we simplify it with the help of factoring and also applying the loss of exponent. I hope you get perfect score in your learning task, but if not, mm -mm, it's okay. It's okay to commit mistakes at the start, but remember that in mathematics, practice will make you better. Okay, since everything is clear now, you may start answering the learning task of the week. And please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe in our YouTube channel so you will get updated on our latest uploads. At yun na nga, natapos na naman ang ating talakayan. Hanggang sa susunod na linggo, dito lang sa programang punong-puno ng kaalaman. Mundo ng numbers, atin yung pag-uusapan. Kaya't ano pang hinihintay nyo? Halina't matuto!